This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? Thank you, thank you. Your applause are much needed this week as I've got an issue after not wearing my Eclipse glasses earlier. Anywho, look in the Sponsor Opportunity Green Room. We have John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE Hall of Famer turned rugby advocate, and he's alone because King Gifte Belu is off on safari in Quebec. Yeah, he doesn't know that there's no such thing as a safari in Quebec. But we plod on, and looking at the Your Company name here, Slate, you'll see that we have a great show ahead, including Irish rugby legend George Hook calling in from Dublin once again. But before we get to any of that, let's get to John and the business at hand. John, you're upset because you're alone with me on the show this week because Gift is actually on safari in Quebec. Yeah, I actually, uh, if I had a choice of being with you or being in Guantanamo Bay, I'd probably choose Gitmo. Would you be a prisoner there or just vacationing? Doesn't matter. I'd be fine. All right. So anyway, we were 59 and 34. Another excellent week. You were on TikTok and across social media. Three and two in your MLR picks. Three and two got a little unlucky with Anthem. Uh, they have, they should have covered that spread. They, they 24 and a half point spread and they lose by 25. A lot of reasons that they lost uh, by 25. <laughs> a lot of it is just uh, bad play. You can get held up in a bank robbery. You can get held up in traffic. You can get held up in high esteem, and you can get held up in the tri zone. But can you ever get held up three times in forty-five minutes? Yeah, if you're the anthem looking for your first win. Unbelievable. I, I thought for sure they would cover this. I was not that worried about it. Uh, they should have covered. They lost by twenty-five. The line was twenty-four and a half. So anyway, we went three and two on the picks for MLR. So a nice winning week that we gave out there extra to people that watch the show and people on social media but uh should have been uh, four and one yeah we got a lot of play on tiktok on that little video so we'll be certain to put those out again and yeah and and the good thing about this is i want to ask you is, is it a cross-eyed guy with uh darts that is scheduling mlr because this coming week there are five games there's only five games you're playing two games at the same time they have a great product their presentation is abysmal the second time in three weeks that Seattle had an epic battle, but it was a 10.30 Friday night Eastern time start. Ridiculous. If you really want to grow the game, put somebody in charge that knows what they're doing. How about the fact that there was no game on Sunday? So you had two on Friday night. Uh, somebody needs to step in there and take control of this. The rugby's fun to watch. I watch all the games. I can't watch them all at the same time because they're on at the same time. But I do watch, I do watch them, and it is fun to watch. I, look, Chicago – is is a good solid team just uh like we thought uh, yeah. dallas uh pl is playing really well yeah and nola basically at home looked like they were going to dominate that match when chicago just dominated the second half chicago loves to run i mean I, this week against the anthem they're going to beat them by 30 plus i bet you and we have teofilo ed fido on mlr weekly this week so he'll answer to some of what happened in that to them in the second half because he had another great game but also you had the color yellow everybody in los angeles just seeing yellow it was ridiculous. Kudos to you. You said that you thought LA would win this game, and they should have. You know, they're visiting uh, in Old Glory. They were the better side the, the, on this day. But those five yellow cards, and you're at one of those – one player got two yellow cards, so it's kind of just four and one's to a red. But How in the world they actually managed the tie on the road on a cross-country trip, 22-22 final, and you had your prop, of all people, getting two yellows, which translated into a red. So you're down a front row player. But, John, we also had that thing called the Champions Cup going on. Yeah, and I've been surprised. The Stormers got beat the last-minute kick. You know, you can blame it on the kicker. You can blame it on the lack of kicking uh, in South Africa. They should have taken that out of the equation where they had to have that kick at the end. Kudos to the teams that were in the, fi in the final eight. The championship has to go through Leinster, and, and I don't think the championship is going to leave Leinster. The Bulls this week, I mean, that that's a – Interesting matchup going in to play Northampton. Well, we got our man George Hook waiting in the wings to weigh in on those matches. So we'll get more on that in a moment. But Courtney Laws, you know, six foot 12 or whatever he is playing number six. He is 
one of the more unsung players in this in this competition. Northampton is a real threat. Guards. And you disagreed with George Hook, and you should have learned your lesson because George Hook said that Northampton is going to win, and you disagreed, and you should have learned your lesson. Well, if if Munster didn't knock the ball on or, or turn the ball over 50,000 times in that second half, they win that match. Yeah, and if they got to play with 20 players and, and Northampton only got yeah. to play with four, there's a lot of ifs there. Yeah, if they had outscored Northampton, we wouldn't be having Yeah, if counts. they would have out that, – that's a great point. If they had outscored them, they would have won the game. All right, on that note, let's take a quick break before we welcome in George Hook. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we're back, and we're welcoming in once again George Hook from Dublin, Ireland. Oh, George, hi, welcome George back to MLR. Here, here, George, here, welcome here, back. Here, yeah. Here, yeah. Yes. A lot to talk about, George. A lot to talk about. I know you were uh, you're very excited about coming on the program this week. As per well, week. I, I, the reason I'm very excited about going on the program, uh, about five years ago, I paid $10,000 for hearing aids because I couldn't hear anything. And obviously I kept them safely in the drawer next to my bed for the last five years. I have rediscovered them. I am wearing them now and I can hear you loud and clear. It's extraordinary. What a difference uh, your dulcet tones make when I have my hearing aids in. After now, that's some of his boring questions, you may take them out. Yeah, this is a lot of added pressure now that you can actually hear what's going on on the show. But, yeah. George, are Leinster fans worried now that La Rochelle is coming back with Ronan O'Gara? Would they have rather faced the Stormers? And how big was that missed kick by Livon? I'm hugely sympathetic to the place kicker. I took this game up at seven years of age in Cork with Brother Athanasius, a presentation brother. And I'm not sure when he told me, but it was pretty soon after that. When you score a try, you try and get as near the goalposts as possible to make the kick easier. The idiot stormer who scored the try just planted the ball. He made no effort to get closer to the bus. So he made the kick more difficult. It wasn't an easy kick. I mean, it wasn't a see, difficult kick. It was a difficult kick if you put the kick in perspective. As your expert betting man, Mr. Layfield, will tell you, if you've got a hundred buck bet and you've only got 50 bucks in your pocket, it's a lot of pressure. So there was pressure on him, right? Now to get to your question, I don't think it makes any difference to Leinster. Leinster are at home. Surprisingly, the Irish media has given them a hard time saying they were sketchy and they were this, that and the other thing. They put the opposition away. What more do you want? And and when La Rochelle come to town, Leinster will expect to beat them too. It's a very different La Rochelle. They're not as good. And I would be reasonably confident of a Leinster victory. Are you concerned that maybe Kean Healy and or James Ryan will not be available for the match? Well, I mean, of course you are. You're concerned every time you lose a key player. Healy less so. Healy now is not far short of my age at this point. And it's a miracle to be still playing. Very underestimated, I think. If you said to me, there's a problem with Jamison Gibson Park, then I'd be worried. Jamison Gibson Park has been huge at Ireland at Leinster. And we lost a Grand Slam because of an idiot decision to put Murray at Scrum up and, and Park on the way. George, Leinster is the obvious favorite, and the sports folks completely agree with you. They are the overwhelming favorite. Unless something happens, they're going to win this thing. Uh, looks like they're a perpetual machine. I don't know what derails them. You have three teams from the Premiership in the Final Eight. You have three teams from France in the, in the Final Eight. You have one team from South Africa in the Final Eight. 
Where does the challenge come from? Well, I'm not sure why everybody is jumping up and down about a resurgence of the premiership. If you look who they beat, like Quinns beat the Glasgow Warriors, you know, <laughs> not exactly uh, a, a major challenge. Then the Chiefs beat another uh, premiership club. So the way the draw worked out, has allowed three premiership teams to come through. I don't think they're fr- they'll frighten anybody. But I mean, the French scare me. To Matt, have slightly dismissed La Rochelle. La Rochelle are going to give us a game in Dublin. Then you have Bordeaux and, and Toulouse beating Racing. I mean, that got very little coverage um, this side of the English Channel. But I can tell you that was... That was a huge game. Yeah. And Toulouse look really good. I'm a kind of history buff, you know. And and France are going to be in the shake-up here. And I know the way the bookmakers feel about Leinster. They're not a shoo-in. This is a very tough competition. Once we get to the last four, we're talking a real tough thing. What about Northampton versus the Bulls? This is South Africa's only team that's making it up. They're the second favorite to win the overall championship, according to the books. Uh, how does North Northampton fare against the Bulls in Northampton? I think Northampton and Franklin Gardens uh, are going to beat the Bulls. I The Bulls don't want oh. to travel. They're already complaining about the travel arrangements. <laughs> it doesn't suit them. You know, it travel doesn't suit South African teams by and large. Now, I know that that's a big statement, but I, but the Bulls in South Africa and the Bulls in Northampton, I think, are two very different teams. All right, hold and that then, thought. We yeah. have to take a break. We have to take a break. We'll be right back. cleats you need them tomorrow if you order today by 3 p.m new york time or noon la time they can have them to you tomorrow young old male female if you're playing on turf if you're playing on grass if you're playing in the rain you're playing in the heat they've got you covered rugbynow.com go there now and we're back and, and george just staying on this thread here south africa or the bulls coming up to northampton on this program you have left English rugby all but for dead in the national team and the premiership teams. And he already he- addressed this. Uh-huh. Were you not listening? He answered exactly that. Have you changed your mind on the premiership teams? No. You I just picked North Northampton Northampton in- over the Bulls. One of my great strengths is my consistency, right? And I'm utterly consistent. We are talking about the best team in England. Northampton, top of the Premiership, right? You might be interested to know that in 1991, <laughs> London Irish went to Franklin Gardens and came away with a nine points apiece draw coached by G. Hook. So, like, I've been in Franklin Gardens. I know what it's like, okay? And I haven't dismissed the best team in England. What I hesitate to say is follow your extraordinary logic that the Exeter Chiefs winning some match against another premiership club solves the entire problems of English rugby. Let's get back to South Africa. Benetton, admittedly in the Challenge Cup, Benetton beat a South African team. Who's at home? Benetton. The South Africans don't travel well uh we're just seeing social media is blowing up because people are, are thinking that you're suggesting that there was a food poisoning incident with munster like in 1995 in the rugby world cup with south africa and new zealand are you suggesting that munster was food poisoned in northampton definitely in 1995 there's no doubt there was some dastardly play by the chef in the kitchen of the hotel i am not saying that because i didn't use the word food poisoning okay i said there was there were there was a virus or whatever but they were sick there's no doubt you know but i mean the english are a nation of of uh, 
you know, who won World War Two, and the Americans were sitting on their butts uh, and wouldn't enter the war. Uh, I have great regard for English song Freud. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, George Toulouse, who played great against Rossing, is now favored by 21 and a half over the Chiefs. In Toulouse and the Chiefs, you know, they're coming off that tough victory over Bath, but Bath was without Finn Russell after the 15th minute. How do you look at the Toulouse versus Exeter match? There's no looking. <laughs> the reason bookmakers drive around in Rolls Royces and the reason that the people who bet drive around on bicycles is the bookies tend to get it right. And Toulouse are going to win this match in a canter. In a canter. There you have it. John, anything for George before we let him go? Yeah, George, the Challenge Cup. It's been fun to watch. And you got some teams playing that wouldn't get a chance to play otherwise. But does it really mean anything to these teams? Does it really mean anything as to, to the clubs themselves? No, because it it, it doesn't generate money. Like Connacht had a win, Ulster had a win, and it didn't raise a ripple of interest. And on that note, thank you, George. Woo-hoo! George Hug, yeah. yeah, he was here. Yeah. Get rid of Matt McCarthy. Yeah. Keep George Hug. Get rid of Matt McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. everybody hates Woo-hoo. Matt McCarthy. Everybody loves George Hug. Yes. Hey, U.S. fans, you can tune into every match live on Flow Rugby. How do we know that? Because we're on there all the time. From New York City comes America's longest running and most popular rugby show. The biggest names in Major League Rugby, MLR highlights, and big match previews. Rugby Wrap Up presents MLR Weekly, made in New York City. And we're back, and how great was it having George John? You're like Anchorman. You're like Will Ferrell. You just, whatever question you have, you're going to ask it even if he just answered it. Well, you're you're Mr. Interrupter. You're the disruptive force. Every time I'm trying to get... Because I'm trying to stop you from asking questions that he had just answered. He just did it again. He's an Irish rugby legend. He's a global icon. By the way, just for you, I'm wearing my New York Yankees Babe Ruth replica jersey because I know how much you love the Yankees. Greatest team in baseball. They're going to win the world championship this year if Texas doesn't. Oh, wait a minute. We happen to have a fan outside City Field with their thoughts on you. Let's go to that right now. Hi, I'm Katrina. I like the Tigers. I like the Mets. I don't like John Bradshaw Layfield. Nobody does. What do you think of that? I think the Tigers and Mets are uncompetitive baseball teams that should be banned. Uncompetitive? From again. Uh, uncompetitive? Uncompetitive, uncompetitive, irregardless of what you think. <laughs> we are uncompetitive. Let's just try to get along for the rest of the show. We're almost there. And let's go to what we know. Champions Cup, quarter, final round. Some very good teams left and some very surprising teams left. Who do you like? I like the Bulls going into Northampton. I agree everything what George Hook said. The South Africans don't travel well uh, going north, especially when it's bad weather up north and it's summer down south. But I think the Bulls beat Northampton. I think Northampton's a good, solid club. I've, everything George Hook said, I believe, is right. But I think the Bulls are going to win this game. I, I agree, and that's only a two and a half point spread right now with Northampton the favorites. And then you got Toulouse minus twenty one and a half points versus Exeter. Talk to George about this, but man, that's a lot of points. It's tempting to take, but I'm going to play it safe. And I think Bordeaux runs Harlequins out of the park and covers that sixteen and a half. And I also think. Toulouse and Exeter are going to be over whatever the over is. What's scary about a 21 and a half point line is a backdoor cover, you know, Exeter scoring late when Toulouse puts in their second team. The question is, does Toulouse take their foot off the gas? It's, that's why I wouldn't bet this because I think Toulouse wins by whatever they want. And, you know, again, Exeter had a struggle against Bath without Finn Russell Yep. for the majority of the match. This is not Bath. This is a very tough team at home in France. Let's come back to this side of the pond, John, the MLR. You got Dallas minus three versus Utah, San Diego minus six versus NOLA, Houston minus four versus New England, a very big match to keep your eye on. Chicago minus 17 versus the Anthem, who almost pulled that off in Utah despite what that final score says. And L.A. hosting Seattle minus six. Again, these spreads are brought up by our crack staff, so they're subject to change later in the week. I'm going with... With uh, my pal Ruckies team here, 
but they're not playing in Starfire. I'm going to go with a big upset, and I think L.A. is going to get a bunch of points. You know, these these books, when they come out, these lines have been insane. Yeah. The lines are just wrong a, a lot of times with these books. They're just like, I don't think they care that much about Major League Rugby. So, you know, it's, it's the thing. NFL and NBA, there's so much money. Those lines are very efficient. When you get down to, like, Division II football or baseball or something, there's not as much money. So the lines can be very inefficient. I think that's what you're seeing with Major League Rugby right now. There's not that much money, so lines are inefficient. I'm going to go with L.A. I'm going to take whatever points are offered. I think L.A. could surprisingly win this game against Seattle, but I think they will cover whatever this, the books come out with lines. It's not a big trip for Seattle, just a flight down to L.A. No, they just had a rough game against the, unexpectedly against a, a team at home against Dallas. I mean, that's a, that's a tough game to come off that. Did anybody see it? No, because they put it on like at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> insane it's anyway my eyes are on that houston new england game we have houston favored by four points because of the home team but man new england is starting to show why they're the champions they played very well against a decent miami team what's it like in houston right now john do you know yeah it's going to be around 80 degrees uh this weekend so it, you know houston has done everything right this is what you want out of the mlr they built their own facility they've got this program where they're working with the community, build, bringing up rugby. I mean, Houston's doing everything right, and they've got a solid, solid team this year. Got the defending champs coming in. This is a big game. I, I'm with you on this. I, I think Houston wins this game. Uh, it's, it's tough to say because New England hasn't looked like the defending champs yet. They will, but uh, I think Houston's going to win this game. And you saw last week the captain, uh, Josh Larson, being the man of the match, the player of the match. And they won that championship without him because of his shoulder injury. So him, him back is a, is a key component of that franchise. I'm going to go with Dallas at home as a favorite. And again, this is our spread versus Utah. I think Dallas beats Utah. I do too. I think Dallas is a good side. They, they look the, at the end of last year, they started playing really well. And they've carried that on this year. They're a good, solid side. And I, I think you're right. Utah's having some problems this year. Not quite the team I don't think they were last year or the year before. And I think Dallas at home, Dallas is looking to get a win. I think this will be the one of the weeks they get one. All right, let's go back across the pond again for the Challenge Cup. We haven't covered the Challenge Cup at all on this program, but now we're in the, in the quarters. I'm going to go with Ulster. I think Ulster, even though they're playing at Claremont, after they destroyed Montpellier in France last weekend, is on the, is on the right track. I like Ulster. Who do you like? Hollywood Bed Sharks are a different level athlete with their back, especially with Fossey Mabippi. Those guys, everybody's been waiting all year for these guys to play like they played the last few weeks. It looks like they're finally reaching up to what was their potential all year long. And I'm going to bet them against a really good side in Edinburgh that Edinburgh has played really well, but I'm gonna, they're playing down in South Africa yeah. at altitude. And I think the Hollywood Bet Sharks, because they've turned that corner, it appears, uh, is I think they win the game. I agree. I, I think they win the game. Let's go down under to Super Rugby where there have been some great matches and some great rugby being played. Who do you like this weekend? I've been to Australia and New Zealand many times. They all despise you down there. Every, everyone down there, good, smart people, they dislike you. Moana Pacifica is getting 14 and a half against Reds. Take Moana Pacifica. All right. Okay. Uh, can the Canes, the Hurricanes, remain undefeated in this unbelievable matchup between two great teams versus the Chiefs, and it's the Chiefs minus one and a half. I'm going with the Canes to stay perfect. Canes to stay perfect, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. Next, let's go to the other code. While we're down under, let's go to the NRL. Who do you like in the NRL, Johnny? My team, the Manly oh. Seagulls. Getting four and a half against the Warriors. Take the Manly Sea Eagles. You are despicable in the way you can just do a... Manly Sea Eagles are their version of the New York Yankees. Oh, oh. I got I got Ruth on the back. You And number three. You, uh, it's a Babe Ruth replica jersey. How do you look yourself in the mirror? You bury Babe the Ruth. town of Manly. You bury the team forever. You make fun of them you make fun of them and now it's as though you know oh no hey now we're pals now oh i saw them play on fox sports here in america and they were really good and so i decided that uh they should have my endorsement now which they welcome with open arms you're a despicable human being 
But if the pick works out, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, I'm going to go with the Raiders, minus 10.5 versus the Titans. Japan Rugby League 1. Who do you like this week? Same team I like every week. The New York Mets playing in rugby jerseys and Kotetsu Liners are playing the Cannon Eagles. Give me the Cannon Eagles over the Mets with the egg. All right. I'm going to go with my Brave Lupus over the Kobe Steel. And I know this is a tough match, but I like those Brave Lupus, and I love their fans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Arigato. Arigato gozimasu. We are winner to see Thank you very much. John, before we go to our picks of the week, we have a surprise pop quiz from Shihi Auto Stores with me trying to get back in good graces with the Shihi Auto Stores. Because you picked against them, you traitor, Benedict Arnold. John, true or false? You can score a try by touching it down with your tummy. True. That is correct. I am stunned. You had a 50-50 shot. I probably should have phrased it differently, but he had a 50-50 shot. He got it correct, ladies and gentlemen. If you remember, a couple of three weeks ago, Sharks versus Ulster, tight match, and Edwin Cater. Puts it down. It looks like he's trying to ground it with his hands. He doesn't touch it with his hands, and he's he's falling into the try zone. He scores it with his stomach. It's a tummy try. So it's whether it's the torso or the leg here. Yeah. I don't think he touches the ball there. I'd agree with I that. I still don't think he touches the ball, and then he grounds it with his stomach, so the try is good. And it was ruled good after the TMO said, yeah, he didn't touch it with his hands, downs it with his tummy. Who knew? I knew that. Picks of the week, John. I hate to do this to my good friend, Bean Gifted Malu, but I'm going with one of the games of the week, and there are three great games in Major League Rugby this week. They're probably going to all be played at the same time because of the scheduler. I'm going with San Diego over Nala. I think Nala's a good team, but I think San Diego's got a little bit of the edge right now, and I think I'm going with San Diego in one of the games of the week. Over Nala. That's a great pick because San Diego is back at home after those two long trips, plus they're coming off a bye. So everybody had a week off. They got to chill. They got to heal. Now they're at home at Snapdragon. Nola coming off that tough loss at home, one that they let get away, and it's not going to get any easier for them out west. It's the pick of the week. Obviously, I know that it's a good pick. I don't need your validation for me giving pick of the week. I've just muted him for the balance of the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go with the Anthem versus Chicago. I'm taking the over in that once again. And on that note, we're out of time. I want to thank John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE Hall of Famer and Rucky Fan Club president, and George Hook, the Irish rugby legend. Gift A. Bailu, you suck for not being here. Thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other programs, including MLR Weekly, the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe well, button. How lucky is Gift not being here? Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, and please join our American... Wrap it up! And please join our American Red Cross Blood Donor Team. Go home!